Welcome to ITSB Technology. My name is Vivek. So this is the part two interview mission related to Java. So last class we have discussed uh, 20 questions related to core Java. And this is the next 20 questions. Uh, topic wise question is going on. So, so today is, let's start our topic. First topic, I choose it, inheritance. So some question come on to the inheritance and some other topics. Uh, one by one, it will come. So let's start. So first question is over. Don't waste our time. Okay, first question. First you can pause the video and try to give the answer. Okay. What is the purpose of this keyword in Java? If you know the variable, so give me the answer. If you don't know, that's not good. It's simply used to uh, current instance. Okay. So in Java, this keyword refers to the current instance of the object. It is useful for the differentiating between the instance variable at local value. Okay. It is useful to you when to know oh, that if you are a um, Java developer like Gitter and set up you are developing one local variable be initialized in the uh, parameters and one uh, global variable be uh, declared in class label and we global variable be initialized to the local variable. How? By using this keyword. So we add we this dot mention that variable which you are using inside that uh, inside that uh, argument so this is the use of that this keyword it can be used to call constructor or it can be used to refer to the instance as well in case of method overriding this is the this is the use for the failing the method of class okay so now explain the concept of inheritance what is the concept of inheritance simple words Inherit the property of the base class to subclasses. That's the simple thing. Like, inheritance is the important concept in the object oriented programming, like the simple inclusive. And some objects share certain uh, characteristics and behavior by using inheritance. We can put the common behavior and characteristics in a base class, which is also known as the superclass. And then all the object with the common behavior inherit from the base class. Common behavior, you can declare that the car, car is the class. The inheritance represents as nothing but an easy relationship, not as a relationship, as is the different thing. Here, I am creating about this as a and easy. Easy is the implementing the, by inheritance, you can say either relationship. But as a relationship, it's okay. One class and another class having that object Okay, then with the user relationship. Inheritance uh, promotes code reuse, method overriding, and coding. Okay. Next question is which class in Java is super class of every other class? Simple say that objective, right? Now, next is why Java does not support multiple inheritance? Why Java does not support multiple inheritance by me? Let's see, here is an explaining the points. You can easily get it. Okay. Multiple inheritance means multiple inheritance means that class can inherit behavior from two or more parent classes. Two or more parent classes. This is the meaning of that. So the issue with the multiple inheritance is that both the parent class may have the different implementation of the same method. So the they have the different way to doing the same thing. Now, which implementation should the child class chosen? Is it ambiguity? Okay. Like we have a two parent classes, right? And one is the child class. And child class is the confused. Which parent we should choose? Okay. The leads, leads of ambiguity. Okay. The leads of this leads to be ambiguity in the multiple inheritance. This is the main reason of Java not supporting multiple inheritance and in implementation. This is the example. You can read it. I will share that. Otherwise, you can refer that video again. Okay. Now, next question is here. I have. Let's say you have a class TV and another class is the atom bomb. But both have method switch off, but only TV has a switch off. Right? If you if your class inherit from both these classes, then you have to issue, you have an issue that you can switch on both parent, but switch off will only the TV. Okay, switch off from the TV. 
we are getting switch on the both bomb and TV class. But if we switch on, we are getting only TV, right? But if we are implementing the climate in it and multiple interfaces in Java, implement multiple internet. Okay, why? Because Java uh, inherit the interface, you can interface from the implementation. In oops, what is the meant by the composite? Okay, composite is also known as the hazard relation. In the composition, in the composition has a relation related to two classes. Class car has the steering wheel. Has a steering wheel. If a class holds the instance of another class, then it's called the composition. Okay, composition. Next question is how aggregation and composition are different concepts. Okay, so uh, composition and aggregation is the uh, composition is the uh, more closer. In OOPS, aggregation and composition are the type of association relations. Okay, both that association relationship. The composition is a strong relationship. If the composition object is destroyed, is destroyed, then all its parts are destroyed. Okay, composition object is destroyed, then all parts are destroyed. And the car has a steering wheel. In car object is destroyed, then the, uh, there is no meaning of the steering wheel. Okay, this is that composition. Aggregation relationship is a weaker than composition. That is, for example, we have a library has a student. If a library is destroyed, then the student still exists, right? So the library and the student are related to aggregation. And the library has a books. If library is destroyed, the books are also destroyed, right? Books of relationship the composition. Like, Weaker, like a strong relationship between that object, the two entities called that aggregation. I think you understood aggregation. Question. Next question is why there are no pointer in Java? Why there are no pointer in Java? In Java, there are reference instead of pointers. These reference points to object in memory, but there is there is direct access. There is direct access to this memory location. JVM is free to move the object within virtual memory, right? The absence of the pointer has Java is managing memory and garbage collection effectively. Also, it provides the developer with the convenience of to not getting worried about the memory allocation and deallocation. The next question is we getting if there are no pointer in Java, then why do we get no pointer exception? Okay. In Java, the pointer equivalent is the object reference. Okay. When we use a, it, when we use a, it points to an object reference. So JVM use pointers, but programmers only see object reference. In case an object reference points to a null object and it will try to access the, the method or member variable on it, then it will get null pointer action. Now, what is the meaning? If an object having a null value is initialized and you are trying to get that value, you are trying to get that reference variable by using by using the reference variable by that value. So that value is having a null value. So null. Well, then we will get a no pointer and that's the value. What is the purpose of super keyword in Java? Super keyword is used in Java. Super keyword is used in Java. Oh, sorry. Super keyword is used in the method or constructor of a child class. Right? It refers to immediate parent of a object class. Where it's immediate parent of the Super class. By using super, we call a method of a parent class from the method of a child class, right? So we can we can also call the constructor of a parent class from the constructor of a child class by using super keywords. It is possible to use this and super keyword both in same constructor mode. Well, this is the rule. Java is specified. Java does not allow using both super and this in the same constructor as per the Java specification. Super or this must be in the first statement in the constructor. Okay. 
what is the meaning of an object cloning in the Java? That object, object having the method called clone, exact copy of that object, the cloning. The method is used for creating an exact copy of an object in Java. It acts like a copy constructor. It creates and return a copy of an object with the same class and with all the fields having same value as of the original object. But that is my point. What is the clone? It will copy the same object which you created a particular like constructor, fields, all the things methods which are available for particular object. All this of value you can access by clone object. But disadvantage of the cloning is that written type is an object. It has no explicit cost of an actual type. Okay. So now next topic is about the static keyword. Okay. So in Java, why do we use the static variable? Okay. Like class variable. Now, whenever we want to have a common property for all objects of a class, we use class level variable. Which level variable we use? Class level variable. If we have a common property, that is the static variable. This variable is loaded in memory only once at a time of a class loading. So it saves the memory since it is not a defining for object in Java. What is my point? What is that meaning of this line? Pick agar aapne variable define kar diya, class level mein. class level variable define kar diya. Us variable reusable, common variable hai. So usko define karne ke baad, to wo to kahi pe bhi use kar dekta, pura class mein. Agar wohi variable aapne declare kara as a static variable, to wo variable at the time of class loading or once ek bari load hoga, bar bar load nahi hoga, jo bhi value uski jayegi. Except the memory, the memory you say barba load and he won up at the high. This is the meaning of a static variable, but this is the not recommended way to use it. Next is in the real time. On the interviewers ask why do we use a static variable? You can say because of this reason, it is defining in the class level, memory loss, memory is using memory is save the memory, right? It load once. The class level common property. Why it is not a good practice to create a static variable in Java? This is the maybe question you want to Why it is not good practice? But people generally not creating a static variable in the class. The static variable are common to all objects. There are parts of it created to some people common. If a new object is created. There is no need to test the value of a static variable. And any code that uses a static variable can be in any state. It can be within a new object or at a class level. So the scope of the static variable is open-ended. Open-ended, not ended. Open-ended in a Java class. If you want to Tighter control on a scope, then variables should be created at the object creation level. Also, define also defining the static variable is not a good practice because they go against the principle of object oriented. Now, next question is: What is the purpose of a static method in Java? Read that and tell me. What is the purpose of a static method in Java? Okay. Java provides the feature of a static method to create the behavior at the class level. The static method is common to all the objects of a class. We do not need to create any object of a class to call the static method. So it provides the convenience to not creating any object of the calling. Also, a static method can access and modify static data member. This also helps in keep the behavior as well as the state at the class level. The static method basically define that we don't have to create an object for it. We can call it directly and we can modify it. By using class name, we can access that uh, object of the class. Uh, sorry, the method can access by using the class, right? Not class. Okay. Why do we mark main method as a static in Java? 
the main method in Java is marked as a static so that the JVM can call it to start the program. It, if main method is not static, then which constructor will be called by Java process? As such, as such, it is a, it is a known as a convenience to mark main method static in Java. But if you if we remove the static, then there is there will be ambiguity. Java process may not know which method to of a class to call the start the program. May be confused. So this is the convenience how to Java is identified the starting code of the program in the class that is passed the argument to the Java. Simple बात है अगर static नहीं होगा तो वो कैसे पहचानेगा कि कौन सा class load करना है कहाँ से हमें program start करना है ये इस property of the JVM JVM will identify the which is the main method और इसीलिए वो main method main method का code होता है class load इसपे हमें program में start करना है अगर हम main method के लिए ही object होना है तो कैसे काम करें किसी के Java को start करने के लिए हमें static method as the main method होना main method को ऐसे static होना what is the scenario to be used on a static block? At that time, there is a class that has a static member variable. This variable is some complicated initialization. At that time, the static block has as a tool to initialize the complex static member variable initialization. The static block is executed even before the execution of the main. Sometimes we can also replace the static block with the static method. It is possible to execute a program without defining a main method. No, within Java seven onwards, you need a main method to execute a program. In earlier version of a Java, there was a background available to static block for the execution, but now the stack has been closed. What happens when a static modifier is not mentioned in Java signature of main method? As per Java specification, main method has, a, has to be marked as a static. It needs only one argument that is an array of a string. A program can compile it with non-static method, but execution it will give a no such method. What is the difference between a static method and instance method in Java? Often there is uh, need to define a behavior of a class that is not depending on member variable of an object. Such behavior is captured in a static method. If there is a, if there is a behavior it depends upon the member variable of an object, then we do not mark it as static. It remain as the instance method. So to call a static method we do not need to create an object we just call it with class name but to call an instance method we need to create that an object first instance member variable cannot be accessed by a static method but an instance method can call both instance variable and static why constructor cannot be final static or object in java if we set a method as a final, it means we cannot overwrite, right? But the constructor as for the Java language specification cannot be overwritten, so there is no use of making it final, right? So this is the reason. If we set as a method as an abstract, it means that method has no body. And it should be implemented in child class, right? But the constructor is called implicitly. When the new keyword is used, when the new keyword is used, the body need the body, body changes first. If we set a method as a static, it means that it belongs to a class, but not a particular object. The constructor is always called to initialize an object. Therefore, what is the, what is the other name of method overloading? A static volume. Now, this is the uh, end of the top 20 questions related to inheritance and strategy. You can revise this video. Try to read these uh, questions as yourself so you can easily understand. Okay. Before reading this, 
Kushan's announced that you should know about the poor Zepa. And you can easily understand. But because I'm just explaining here, I'm not giving the example. I've got just the division purpose. These those people know the poor Java, this video is suitable for that. If you don't know the poor Java, don't try to read it, this video. Please, this is my humble request. Don't watch this video, don't waste your time. First, learn the poor Java, then you can prepare for the interview. This is the related to interviews. Okay, so thank you. We will meet next part of that poor Java series. Thanks.